let's see again what happens. Okay, so let's start with an easier case. So it's called the case of a homogeneous system. It's called homogeneous because it's the situation where the equations are invariant under scaling. So a homogeneous system is one where the right-hand side is zero. Okay? There's no B. If you want, the constant terms here are all zero. It's zero, zero, zero. Okay, so this one is not homogeneous. So let's see what happens there. Well, so what that means, you know, so let's take an example. Instead of this guy, we could take x plus z equals 0, x plus y equals 0, and x plus 2y plus 3z also equals 0. Well, can we solve these equations? Yeah, I think actually you already know a very simple solution to these equations. Yeah, you can just take x, y, and z all to be zero. So there's always an obvious solution namely zero, zero, zero. And in mathematical jargon, this is called the trivial solution. Okay? So, there's always this trivial solution. And what's the geometric interpretation? Well, having zeros here means that all three planes pass through the origin. So, certainly, the origin is always a solution. The origin is always a solution because the three planes pass through the origin. Okay. So now there's two subcases. Okay. One case is if the determinant of the matrix A is non-zero. Well, that means that we can invert A. So if we can invert A, then that means we can solve the system by multiplying by A inverse. If we multiply by A inverse, well, we'll get X equals A inverse times zero, which is zero. Okay, and that's the only solution. Because, well, you know, if Ax is zero, then let's multiply by A inverse. We get A inverse Ax, that's X, equals A inverse zero, that's zero. We get X equals zero. We've solved it. Okay, no other solution. So, to go back to these pictures that we all enjoy, it's... No, it's this case. Okay. Now, the other case, if the determinant of A equals zero, then it means that actually this doesn't quite work. So, let's see. What does it mean that the determinant of A is zero? Well, remember, the entries in A, they are the coefficients in the equations, okay? But now, the coefficients in the equations, they are exactly the normal vectors to the planes. So, that's the same thing as saying that the determinant of the three normal vectors to our three planes is zero. So, That means that n1, n2, and n3 are actually in the same plane. It's 
called coplanar. Okay. These three vectors are coplanar. So let's see what happens. So I claim it will correspond to this situation here. Let's draw the normal vectors to these three planes. Okay, well, it's not very easy to see, but, okay, so I've tried to draw the normal vectors to my planes. Well, they're all in the direction that's perpendicular to the line of intersection. They're all in the same plane. So if I try to form a box, you know, a parallelepiped with these three normal vectors, well, I will get something that's completely flat and has no volume, has volume zero. Okay, so, Parallelepiped <coughs> has volume zero. And the fact that the normal vectors are coplanar tells us that in fact, well, let me start a new blackboard. If we, okay, so now let's say that our normal vectors n1, n2, n3 are all in the same plane. And let's think about the direction that's perpendicular to n1, n2, and n3 at the same time. Okay, I claim that will be the line of intersection. So let me try to draw that picture again. So we have three planes. Okay, now you see why I prepared the picture in advance. It's easier to draw it beforehand. And I said their normal vectors are all in the same plane. So, oh, what else do I know? I know that all these planes pass through the origin. Okay, so the origin is somewhere in the intersection of the three planes. Now, I say actually the normal vectors to my three planes, well, that's kind of hard to draw, but are all actually coplanar. Okay, so N1, N2, N3 determine a plane. Well, now if I look at the line through the origin that's perpendicular to N1, N2, and N3, so perpendicular to this red plane here, uh, that's a terrible picture. It's supposed to be in all the planes. Okay, you can see that better on the side screens. Okay, and why is that? Well, that's because my line, it's perpendicular to the normal vectors. So it's parallel to the planes. It's parallel to all the planes. Now, why is it in the planes instead of parallel to them? Well, that's because my line goes through the origin and the origin is on the plane. So certainly my line has to be contained in the planes, not parallel to them. So the line through the origin and perpendicular to the plane of N1, N2, N3 is parallel to all three planes. And because the planes go through the origin, it's contained in them. Okay, so what happens here is I have, in fact, infinitely many solutions.
And how do I find these solutions? Well, if I want to find something that's perpendicular to n1, n2, and n3, well, if I just want to be perpendicular to n1 and n2, I can take their cross product, exactly. So, for example, if I do n1 cross n2 is perpendicular to n1 and to n2, and also to n3, because n3 is in the same plane as n1 and n2. So if you're perpendicular to n1 and n2, you're also perpendicular to n3. It's automatic. Uh, so it's a non-trivial solution. This vector goes along the line of intersections. So that's the case of homogeneous systems.